Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the shop. So I've been wanting to do a video for a while on what it's been like using this cabinet that I built and what, you know, kind of lessons I learned after using it for a while. So I definitely learned some stuff. I screwed some things up when I first uh, built it, not surprising, and just wanted to share what I've had to do to get it to where I actually don't mind using the thing and it works well. So what I actually want to do is start at the other end of the garage at the compressor. Okay, so at the compressor, uh, I did another video on this, but I'll just do a very quick recap here. I was not getting enough airflow at the blasting cabinet. So it was just a pain to use. So I upgraded my entire air supply between the compressor and the cabinet with half inch tube and critically um, proper fittings. So they're all half inch fittings and no quick disconnects. I had a ton of those quarter inch NPT quick disconnects in the system and that necks your airflow or your path down to 3 16 of an inch. So you end up getting like nothing through that as far as you know the system is capable of pushing so so that was a huge problem so upgraded all that and the airflow is now great um, second thing related to air that i had to upgrade was moisture control so i had two kind of like passive moisture traps in line in between the compressor and the cabinet and that was just not good enough for this climate uh, it's very humid here so you know if you're out west or in another area where it's not humid probably fine but i had to purchase this uh what central pneumatic air dryer you know harbor freight but the thing works great and i get no moisture in the lines after installing this uh, this, I think, was about 400 bucks, so not cheap. However, I don't really count this as being part of the cost of the cabinet because even if I bought my own cabinet, I would have still had the moisture in the lines problem. So, so this you were going to need in my climate anyway, but that is something that I had to buy after uh, building and using the cabinet. Okay, let's head back over to the cabinet itself. Okay, so first thing I want to talk about is lighting. From my build video, you'll probably recall that I initially had two 7-inch LED lights mounted here just inside these pillars, one on each end. Uh, that seemed like it might be sufficient. It was not. Um, so what I ended up doing was upgrading to these very large off-road automotive LEDs. Those provide plenty of light. So that was a big upgrade. Um, and that, so these obviously wouldn't run off of like, you know, your standard AC adapter. So I did have to buy, buy this guy, which is actually overpowered for what I'm, you know, using it for. Uh, but anyway, so I did have to buy that and the upgraded lights. And that made like a world of difference. Here, let me plug these in because I'm going to need the light in order to show you the next thing I want to show you. All right, so as you can see, plenty of light in here. Um, but what I want to actually show, but you can kind of see how a cone is forming in the middle of my media hopper, you know, where it's getting pulled from, from underneath. So when this is not totally full, this coal slag is really, I don't know, like sticky. And it will, it adheres to itself and will not, it doesn't flow as well as you would think. Um, so that leads me into the next change that I had to make, which was underneath. So you can see where I used to have these tubes running into the hopper. It was on the side here on each end. And those are now plugged off. 
And the reason for this is that as the hopper would kind of like empty or, you know, as it was circulating, I would end up with like a cone that went the whole way down and nothing would be falling into this because that coal slag kind of sticks to itself a little bit, just doesn't flow as well as you think. So anyway, so I moved these into the bottom of my little hopper doors so that, you know, everything in that hopper is coming down to here. So there's just, it makes sure that the media is, is flowing better. Next thing, I did not have these two blanks perfectly even, and I was getting uh, more media from one hopper versus the other. Like, and you know, it just what, like you'd, you'd pretty much get one empty and it would all be in the other one and not moving. So, so got these tubes perfectly even, and that seems to have taken care of that problem because now it's pulling from both. Next thing down here, uh, was the foot pedal. So previously, I'll put an image of it up somewhere here. Previously had just a like press and have to hold it down to be on and then you let off and it shuts off. That gets a bit fatiguing after a while. So found these really nice Heinrich tools, uh, foot pedals, and these are great because it's just press it on and it stays on. Press it off, st stays off. So you can just press it on and then relax while you're, while you're blasting. Uh, next item, uh, I had a kind viewer um, point out that I had my inlet and outlet on this uh, Oneida Dust Deputy reversed. You would think that your average moron could have gotten that correct, uh, putting that together, but apparently not. So thank you uh, to that gentleman for pointing that out uh, and not calling me an idiot at the same time. Uh, overall, uh, there is still a, an upgrade that I want to do, not to this part, but to uh, the shop back. So it is very very loud um just with the compressor going and the shop back going it's loud i mean you've definitely got to wear ear protection so i would like to upgrade to a fine shop back and yeah you know, those are like i can't remember 350 400 bucks so just haven't done it yet but the fine brand it does make the most quiet unit that i've been able to find through my research and other viewers have also recommended that to me Oh man, I think that might be all the upgrades that I have done and changes I've made since building this thing. And I am now pretty happy with it. Now some other just general things that I would do different is the sliding tray that I built. So, you know, this tray, ugh, see, I can't even slide it right now. Um, sliding tray was a great idea for my placement of the cat. As you can see, it's up against a wall, so I've only got access through one side. Sliding tray was a great idea for that, except that I find I never slide it out for two reasons. One, I don't really need to, because if I'm working on something long, it spans the length of the thing, and I can just pull it out and, you know, by sliding it. I don't have to pull the tray out. And if I'm working on something small, like that piece there, it, you know, I just use it in the area nearest the door. So I haven't really needed the sliding tray. And as you can see here, so there's a wheel here, but you can't see it because it's covered with coal slag. That's the other problem with the sliding tray. As you use it, all of the mechanisms for it actually sliding get caked up with stuff and then it no longer slides. So it just good idea in theory, in practice, you know, it was a huge waste of engineering effort because it doesn't actually work. 
So I would just go with a static floor, um, probably two panels, one on each side that you could remove as needed. Next thing that I would change, I don't know if I practically could in this shop, but if I had a larger space, I would change the position or location of this. I would not put it up against a wall on one side. I would have it open on both ends, have a door on both ends. That would just, it would make loading media easier. Like I said, you wouldn't need the sliding tray concept because you would have access to both ends. That would be a better design if I were not, you know, space constrained. And you know, that might be it. Uh, overall, the, this thing, you know, it's been a learning experience. It has cost me a lot of money uh, because of my mistakes, but I learned a lot along the way. So, you know, hopefully this helps you out. I'll post everything down in the description that I have had to buy, you know, after the fact to make this thing work properly. Well, thanks for hanging in there with me. And until next time, farewell.